What's up gamers and welcome to a new episode of Last Claudia. Today we're going to be talking about a brand new character and a brand new arc that I'm really excited to discuss here. So let's go ahead and get right to it. So we're going to go ahead and go to the gotcha section. And by the way, the story has been really, really getting heated up here. I love the direction they're taking the story in this game. All right, so we're going to talk about Sage Emperor Zekas. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, he's finally here. The shift version. Okay, so let's go over his stats here. We're looking at 1397 intelligence. That is super high. Super high for intelligence. Uh, and 1049 mine's pretty good too. Uh, and of course, 4494 HP and then 316 MP. Those are the main things that are important here to see. All good stuff to have. As far as his abilities are concerned, they built him different. And before I actually continue, I, I in my mind, I predicted that they were going to build him as an offensive mage who did buffs. More on the offensive side, since that's what his special was. Like Zillion, he would uh, buff the ally. So I was hoping that they were going to focus on making him kind of a buff for offensive stuff. And uh, as far as elements, I didn't know what they were going to do, but I think they did a good job here. So looking at his skills, uh, he's got a variety. So his S1 is a lightning strike, basically lightning damage, low chance to inflict stun, super good, or thunder damage. Uh, his S2 is cold heart, so this is some ice damage with a low chance to insta-kill. Of course, never including bosses or arena, which is basically... Something we do, we shouldn't even need to mention, but we do. Uh, which is, you know, it's decent ability. S3 is basically just a fire ability. And then his special, which is Kakaitis. Shout out to Shadowverse for giving me that pronunciation. Uh, this is basically just a powerful ice attack against all enemies. Ice is basically his, you know, bread and butter. So, of course, his special is going to be ice-based. Uh, but those are his skills. And then, of course, we look at his traits. This is where things get super interesting. So check this out. Imperial Knowledge. Fire, Ice, Earth, and Thunder Damage plus 25%. Damage Cap 3500. When magically attacking with the above four attributes, give minus 50% and deal damage to enemy, res to enemy resistance is possible. Okay, hold on. Let me read that again. So give minus 50% and deal damage if enemy resistance is positive. So if they're resistant to whatever you're doing, you're going to cut their resistance in half and deal damage. So this is a way for him to sort of do some elemental piercing with his spells. This is something that I discussed with Amelia. Hers is a little bit different and a little bit better for her specific element. But this is something similar where he, you're still going to take some damage. Even if you're resistant, I like that. That's very powerful. Like I say, any kind of like spell piercing ability like this, really, really good. Uh, of course, you know, giving the extra damage cap is nice as well. So again, really, really good. Like it, he's really focused on the basic four elements. He doesn't do anything with light or dark. It's just, you know, the basic four. And then of course you have a second trait, Protean Shift. Regularly check. For allies near death, if any are found, give de defense and mind 15% and regen effect to all allies. And then if none are found, give strength and intelligence plus 15% effect to all allies. So basically what this does is at a certain moment, it's going to do a check. And during that check, if at least one of your, you know, party members is low and close to death, everybody's going to get a, a boost to their defense, mind, and regen effect. This will happen to everyone, even if it's just one person. Um, but during that check, that's going to happen periodically. If everybody's doing okay, you're just going to get an offensive buff, which is so good to all of your allies. This is... See, this is part of why I really like how they did, built this character. For the longest time, support units were really not, you know great not a big deal nothing really nothing to brag about the first good buffer that we actually got was Tinkili the diva and she's still good but this is definitely going to outclass her uh, as far as in the offensive buffing department just because his traits have this kind of stuff and that's not even all there's actually some skills he has that's going to further you know make this better but that's just fantastic so i'm glad that they're that, that the devs are looking to build 
good support units. And this is not just a support unit. He's also good on the offensive magic as well. So he's doing real good. So let's go ahead and take a look. Whoops. If I can get rid of that little lock there. Let's go ahead and take a look at his actual skills. So <clears throat> he has a charisma. I didn't see this coming. It's a Sage Emperor Charisma. Uh, all allies fire, ice, earth, and thunder physical attack damage cap 1500. Well, of course, only while he's alive and it doesn't stack. So, this is for physical elemental people. So, for example, if you're running Kohaku and she's dealing some earth elemental damage, she's going to have a damage cap increase to 1500. So, she's not just going to be dealing all nine, she's going to be dealing over 10k if you built her right. That's fantastic. And like I said, this is going to be the only mage you need in the party and just have a bunch of physical DPSers and you're going to be dealing so much extra damage. It's going to help a lot of the characters that don't even have a damage cap increase. And then for those that do have an increase, it's just going to make it even better. That is a fantastic supportability. Uh, natural, well, I mean, he's going to be casting it for free uh, every round. Really good. And he has a lot of the... Uh, High level spells, uh, Crimson Flare, which is the fire one. He's got Blizzard, which is arguably the best, you know, mid tier um, spell in the game. Uh, Blizzard is something that's highly used in Arena, so why not have it? Absolute Zero, which is the new highest tier ice spell that Amelia uses. Grand Cross, which is like the you know, high spell, um, tier three earth magic. Uh, Zaquum, which is this is a different one. A powerful earth attack against all enemies also deal MP damage and reduce movement speed. Chance to inflict poison and or curse once per quest and becomes unable or becomes usable when near death. So this could only be used when you're at critical low health. Uh, but when you do it, it's going to do a lot for you. That's one of those spells that, you know... You're going to potentially do a combo to make this happen, or it's just going to be kind of a, an oh shit button if need be. But, you know, it's pretty cool. Uh, if you could just cast this at any time, it would be super broken. So that's why it's good they put some kind of a, a cap or limit on this. Uh, he also has Vows of Rise, which, of course, you know, a powerful thunder attack. He runs Grand Brand Phaser, which is basically a straight plus 35 to all allies. Uh, crit phaser, so boosted and crit for everybody, 15%. So liberate. Now, this is zero cost. Reduce MP to one. Recover MP 50%. Once per quest, excludes arena. Okay, so basically, you're going to put yourself near death by using soul liberate and then cast Zaquam is basically what the whole combo is right here. If you really want to go for that. Is it worth it? Honestly, it's up to you. I think it's a good combo but you might not really need to do that uh but you know if you got a healer in the party like you know theria you might be fine uh he's at arcane up two and four because you know he's going to be that powerful so all you got to do is add the uh you know magic up one through uh max and you're good to go you got crit up two and three he's got proud force royal armor auto protect auto advanced circles now this is like the top tier mage abilities to have. Uh, that's one of them right there. Same with auto recast. Basically, you're going to be casting spells a lot faster. Definitely like high level, high tier stuff for mages. You have Awaken, which is decent. Ice Attack Raise 2 is an added bonus. Uh, Elemental Force. This is another new one. Really strong. Fire, Ice, Earth, and Thunder Attack Magic have a chance to deal critical damage. Chance to recover a little MP when magically attacked by enemies with the attributes above. So it does two things. So all the the basic four elements have a chance to counter and, and gain some MP. And then if someone hits you back with a spell of those four elements, you might actually gain some MP back. That's pretty strong. Uh, even for um, Arena, because when people are using their Amelius to deal damage, while they're dealing damage to Zika, so he's just going to be getting some MP off of it potentially and be able to just fire right back. It's actually pretty decent. I like that. And it could be good for other modes as well. Uh, Maglion, which basically means the further away you are, the more damage you deal. A movable object, which is a must-have for mages. Same with high-level magic chant. We all know about that. He's got Thaumaturgy Ring Plus. 
So this is the actual stronger version of basically being able to do more physical ta uh, damage based on a percentage of your magic power. It's pretty cool. He's got Manor Rayag, which is SAT speed minus 10%, but your skill damage becomes plus 30%. I'm okay with that. He doesn't necessarily need to be fast. He's a mage. So he does SCT doesn't need to build up super fast since you're going to be more casting spells with him. It really just depends on how you build him. But I think getting a free extra 30% skill damage is great for the cost of, you know, just losing 10% of your SCT. You know how many accessories that we have that can boost your SCT? This is not a problem. This is just an added bonus to make sure he deals more damage. Fantastic ability. And finally, we have Convergence. So when taking lethal damage from an enemy, spend 2% of the damage as MP and survive with 1 HP. Take damage if MP is insufficient. So if you don't have enough MP to actually absorb the damage, you're just taking the HP. You're just taking the hit as if it never happened. So this has to trigger if you have enough MP to do it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's just kind of a, a way to keep you alive. You know, get you low and then trigger, you know, awaken. You know, it's, it just gives him more survivability. I mean, he's not super tanky, but I mean, that helps him to survive, which is what a mage needs. So, to be honest, he's the total package. These are just fantastic skills to have, fantastic traits to have. This is obviously a very high top tier character. You're going to want to use him on everything. And I mean everything. He's going to be ridiculous in PvP. I guarantee it. And of course, you're going to want to run him in tower. I mean, he's going to have four of the elements that you need to do with a specific floor easier. So that's a good thing to have. And then, of course, you know, all the other... Oh, just good support stuff to increase damage. I mean, he's he's literally the total package. The only thing he doesn't do is heal people, but he don't need them to heal. He's offensive. That's the whole point. He's going to deal a ton of damage. He's going to make sure your allies deal a ton of damage. He is just fantastic. He is worth pulling, and that's why I went out of my way to pull this guy. So very, very happy about that. Definitely worth uh, spending some crystals on if you got it. Let's talk about the new UR arc, which is the one thing I'm not going to get. Because <laughs> I'm not spending any more crystals. I'm done. Um, so the arc attribute, and this is called um, Theopolis of Lost Magnus. This is the arc, the attribute basically says the first 10 seconds of battle, apply defense and mine debuff of 50%. So cop, you know, chopping it in half to all enemies. And then it says if unit is affected by weak or another debuff that lowers all attribute resistance, Ignore the debuff and give all attribute resistance plus 10%. So it kind of counters it too. Uh, increase unit and soul drop rate. And I'm sorry. It says increase unit soul drop rate and quest by two times. Not stackable. And basically what that last sentence means is it's going to double your chances of getting a unit shard when you're grinding for, you know, unit shards. So that's kind of cool. I like it. Uh, I wish I could get it, but I can't. So we're done with that. Uh, but really, really good arc attribute. It also has a skill. So all enemies attribute resistance minus half. Um, and then attack the lowest attribute resistance of enemy of each enemy with a very powerful attack and damage count 20k. So this is going to deal a ton of damage to everyone while dropping everyone's elemental resistance. It's super, super strong. So a very good attribute, very good skills. Let's see what you can learn. So with this particular arc, you're going to be getting slow, which is new, but eh, reduced movement speed for a single enemy. I mean, it's okay for maybe targeting a boss, and a boss that will have to fight one thing. Again, it's I don't know if it's even really worth it, but it's there. It's a, it's a new spell. The damage absorption, too, we have Giga Week, pretty decent. Uh, Abyssal Gate and Illamelth, we've seen those two. And uh, Thaumaturgy Ring, which is actually the first arc that we have that'll let you actually learn it or teach it to somebody so very good to have uh 12 sc you know it's one of those things that if you like it not everybody's really big in this ring but i think it's a pretty decent ability it gives certain characters more damage you know what i mean so that's pretty cool and giga week is also good too 
I don't think you can learn that for anyone either. I might be wrong on any particular arc. I know that uh, Lilibet, Shift Lilibet has it naturally, but I don't know if this can be learned from any other arc. So that's a good one to have too, in all honesty. So pretty good stuff. So it is about two things here that, uh, that are new that you might want to learn. And then let's take a look at the Aether Reward. This is the Dimension 1 Negrons. Now, this is a 7-star staff. 97 strength, 250 intelligence, which, of course, for a 7-star weapon, it should be that broken as far as the stats. And then mine 121, as if you need even more of a boost. Magic attack damage plus 15%. Support magic consumes minus M 2 MP. This is really, really good for Zekas. This is really, really good for um, Tinkila the Diva. Uh, I mean, bro, for the uh, support magic thing, but you really want it for Zekas probably more than anyone else. Uh, and there's other people that can do support magic as well, like Sinku. You know what I mean? So there are other people that this could really uh, benefit. So this is a fantastic item. If you're lucky enough to pull the arc, you definitely want to spend your... Ethereum to level that up as fast as possible so you can get this item. This is absolutely fantastic. One of the best, uh, probably, um, staffs in the game, if not the best. Really, really good. So overall, this is a top, top tier arc, highest tier. It's going to be good against everything. The PvP must have in PvP. Basically... I, if I'm going up against an enemy that has this equipped, I'm going to lose. It's, it's as simple as that. I'm going to lose. So this is definitely a must for PvP. Uh, it's going to be good in just about any mode, but especially PvP. But yeah, so the arc is, is super top tier. You definitely want this. Uh, good luck. Hopefully you guys are lucky enough to get it. I wasn't, so it's what it is. But yeah, definitely good stuff to have. So let's talk about the uh, paid accessories. Now, obviously, I have to go to the unit since I've already purchased them both. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at it here. All right, so the first thing we're going to discuss is the Ala Zeleste. Now, I'm going to try to actually pull it up so that we can actually see the. There we go, the full screen. So Ala Zeleste is five star Sage Emperor Zekas only. Has 63 intelligence, 101 defense, 147 mind, so it's got some decent stats. Continuous magic barrier effect, magic attack damage cap plus a thousand. So basically, a fantastic thing to have. Oh, and he has elemental resistance plus 10 to both ice and earth, which is just an added bonus. Didn't really need it, but why not take it, right? So, you know, again, helping the offense that he has, also helping the magic defense to. Just upping his defense in general, like you're getting more than a hundred plus on both defense and mine. You're still getting a little bit of an intelligence boost. This is just this is a one hundred percent fantastic thing to get for this guy. So the question is, do you want this or do you want the other item? Assuming that you're only getting one of these. So we're gonna go back to the uh, screen here for the second item. We're gonna go ahead and pull up the full thing if I can tap it properly. To get it up. There we go. So this is the Azure Boots of Lexut. Now this is Sage Emperor Zika's only accessory that has 34 intelligence, 20 MP, 36 mind, uh, chance to evade physical attacks, boost, boom, and speed. You also get a boost in fire and thunder elements with silence resistance. So overall, this is a decent item. Again, any kind of an accessory that can give you a boost in strength and intelligence is at least decent. You're getting a little bit of MP, which is okay. A little bit of mind, which is okay. The actual trait is okay. Like I said, chance of a physical attack is good. Uh, boost of movement speed is okay. Uh, the size resist is probably one of the best things about this thing. But if I'm going to be honest with you, if you are only going to be spending enough paid gems to get one item... I would highly recommend the other item. So I would highly recommend getting the Azala Zeleste. This is going to be much better than Das Boots. So there you go. So that's pretty much uh, it for that unit and the, and the arc itself. Uh, like I said, I was fortunate enough to pull them. It took a lot of gem crystals, but we're good. I can move on. And... Uh, <clears throat> 
the next thing I'm going to actually do, believe it or not, is I'm going to do a little bit of a arena. If you don't care about PvP or arena, thank you for watching, and, you know, uh, we'll see you on the next one. But for right now, what I'm going to do, just to, you know, use this new device that I have, we're going to go ahead and actually see if we can get one quick win here in the next one or two fights. Uh, this is the squad right now. Uh, typically, what I do here is I try to fight someone that has uh, higher points than me. Uh, so that I could potentially get more, you know, points if I win. And if I lose, I won't lose as many points. So, yeah, typically I'll go for someone that's stronger. So, let's go ahead and do this. This will be the first time in a long time I've been able to record actual gameplay footage, which is what I've been wanting to do for a while. But this is just kind of a bonus for you guys since I don't get to do this and now I can actually start it. So, against Swag. Let's see if we got enough Swag to beat this guy. We can eliminate it. So we're going to look for a mage to hit if he's got one. I didn't really look to see what he has. He's got Lily, so we're going to go ahead and target Lily. Uh, with a regular attack, though. So. Matter of fact, I should actually switch since uh, I didn't realize that he was... Uh, he's dead, actually. But All right, let's use Kohaku to take him down. And then we're going to make sure that she's on the blizzard. And, of course, we got our girl Theria doing some healing. Uh, unfortunate that Ray died so easily. It's kind of a darn shame. She's not going to be able to cast her spell right now, so we're going to go ahead and switch over to Ray. See if we can go back and uh, target that uh, Lily and take her out. Or I could probably go, yeah, let's go after Lily, actually. Let's do it. We'll try to get her killed, because she's basically about to take us out here. Actually, she's about to die because my Amelia just took some lethal damage, I think. So we should be able to knock out Lily right now. Yep, she's gone. All right, look for the next person after we're done getting healed. And unfortunately, I just got cursed, so I'm not going to be able to cast any skills for a bit, at least until it gets healed. So I'm probably going to lose this match, unfortunately. Uh, who can I hit, though? Who is the weakest? Uh, they're all pretty strong. We're going to go after Zuglas. Get some Blizzard going on here. Oh, yeah, we just got destroyed here. I did not have enough swag to deal with this guy. Man, all right, we'll do one more fight just to see what we, you know, if we can get a little bit of a win here. I always just get my two wins per day. I try not to push too hard because I end up losing a lot more than I want to. Um, but yeah, basically what I do as far as my strats here is I typically try to kill the mage since they're usually the squishiest. And then... Uh, Kind of just play it by ear afterwards. So we're going to go up against Dil Mordo. Uh, they're running both Amelia. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is going to be a tough one. I'm probably not going to win, but let's go ahead and give it a shot. He's got more points than I do. So let's see if we can uh, get some points off of this guy. But yeah, in the arena, and we're in the Super Arena. So we're in Super Arena Gold Rank 2. Uh, you're going to see a lot of Amelia's on people's team. She is pretty much the best mage to use in Arena right now. And we're going to go ahead and target her right now. Let me just make sure we're actually aimed at her because I think I used the wrong skill. There we go. All right, so we're getting hit by Amelia because I actually dealt fatal damage to her. But they have decoy on, which means that we're going to take some damage and she's going to be revived again. So i got to continue to target her and make sure that I can uh, actually finish her up before she becomes a huge problem. Or should I kill Theria? That's that's another thing, too. You gotta think about that stuff. And here comes the healing. So this is where things get a little crazy. Again, we're gonna try to focus on Amelia here. Or maybe I should just go after Theria. You know what? No, she's got no she has no skills right now. Alright. Actually, we've killed uh, Amelia, didn't we? So, actually, let's kill their Ray. He's almost dead. Before she gets healed. Let's get rid of him. There we go. All right, so let's see. We got Amelia at full health. We got Theria low. Let's go ahead and take out Theria. Or try, oh, or not. Apparently, I, I guess I killed her. Or did it just, yeah, it just completely ignored my input. Well, thank you for just ignoring what I wanted to do. And now she's going to get... Oh, she's healing Amelia. All right, let's see if we can't kill her off right now. Nope. Too late. 
We're going to still go after her, though. Get rid of the healer. Or at least try to. Oh, I hate to I'd use that ability way too soon. All right, so now I'm starting to lose some points myself. So I got to be actually, I got to be pretty careful here. What I'm actually going to do right now is I'm actually going to heal with uh, Ray. I forgot I can do that here. And plus, it'll give us some more defense. All right, so who should I go after? We'll go after Rim. See if we can't knock her out. Oh, Theria, such a pain. All right, so we got uh, Kohaku back up. Oh man, we're getting uh, we're getting wrecked right now by some uh, Blizzard here by the opposing Amelia, and their rim is just staying topped up. And now my uh, friend here is about to die. Let's go ahead and get some healing on my part too. I think I need to target a mage because I'm not going to be able to hit Rem. Matter of fact, let's actually go after Theria here. Just try to get the kill. There we go. And ladies and gentlemen, this is how you uh, do it in the arena. <laughs> Again, obviously it's not foolproof. If the enemy is just much better than you, you're not going to win. That's just what it boils down to. But yeah, this is basically what I do. I try to get two wins a day. I already had one win before going into this because I forgot I was making a video today and I was actually going to include this. So there we go. So for being gold, uh, super ranked gold two, you get 50k blue, uh, 19.8 red, and then 15 mother souls. So those are okay. Uh, but the main thing you want to try to get is gold one super so that you can get 3k crystals. That's the only reason I'm pushing. Once you get to super one, it doesn't even matter anymore at that point. Um, but I've been wanting to actually show some footage. With my old device, I couldn't do it. With this, this new device, I can actually start showing some stuff. So maybe you might see some extra uh, fight videos in the future. If you like it, let me know. If you have any preferences, I'd like to hear your input. That's going to be it for this video. So once again, thank you everybody for watching. Uh, also, please support all the other YouTubers that also do content. Um, that Nerd DK has done some good stuff. Uh, Buddha Fish, Mobile Gamers Unite. Uh, show them all some love as well. They're also bringing you to good content from their perspective. And it's always good to get multiple perspectives. Until next time, keep gaming. Take care, everyone.